One thing I do like about the Rumble, though, I'll say this, is that you can control an area, you can control a team, basically. Like, for instance, say Olaf mm -hmm. overextends, put, the, put it in right behind him, it makes it so he's all by himself. Or you can use it behind the entire team, let Vi maybe get engaged off, and then you can kind of snowball all of that within it with the Ori Oriana pull them all, the Oriana ult pull them all together, and then Annie, uh, it was stunned after that. So it's interesting, and I really want to see how it works in lane, because they obviously have early here, and looking at both compositions, who do you really favor here early on, and who do you really favor later? Well, this game, it's a lot more even than it was last time. Seven Wars definitely have a strong early bot lane, and uh, arguably, I think, probably actually inarguably, a stronger uh, bot lane early on, uh, just pretty much no matter what situation they end up, because Ezreal has problems in the early game, unless he can get, you know, an open field where he suddenly becomes amazing. In this situation, though, with the Rumble that will push back Mundo early on, I gotta say I I don't really favor you know I I don't really favor that rumble in terms of actually doing anything to Mundo in the long run. Oh this could be dangerous right here. We do have Vine going for an invade on this top so they do have everyone there. They do land the hook on his hands as he's gonna get caught here. But will he be able to escape as he does this slow he forced the flash right away and it looks like he just might do it but they're gonna dive under the turret they're gonna get first one over to Thiag. The jungle here for Lion, fantastic little bit of a trick right there, able to get that hook on the Xantins, and able to get that first blood. Now, I hate to be the hype killer here. Um, Yuri, I think, may have forgotten which button his barrier was bound to. He, uh, he barriered. I, I couldn't tell you why, other than it being an error, but Seven was really, really smart going for the counter invade. They know that if they want to go for this, their man is going to be back up. If they want to go for a 5 on 5, they could do it. And at the very least, it's an opportunity to ward, but they're not going to do that. I know why he did do it, his barrier. Why? It's a mind game. My game. He's like, I can beat you middle without barrier, but we'll, we'll see how that goes out a little bit later on. But we're going to have some more. Gank me. Yeah, they're going to start off at their blue buff here. Not actually going to go for an invade at all, but we do see a very early pink ward put down in this bush here by Thaya. Getting that early pink ward down is, is really, really nice because obviously having a pink in that brush, it lasts indefinitely. That gives you uh, quite a significant edge if anyone's planning on going for any early invade. Only thing that could really bring that down is if Seven Wars have seen them do this before, if this is a common strategy they run in scrims or whatever, because if you put a pink ward in that brush and it gets found almost immediately, and it's not that big of a detour for a jungler to do, it could potentially go wrong. The other question, actually, is who bought the pink ward? I didn't notice it. I believe that was Thyag. Since he got that first blood, he used that little bit of extra money that he did get. Use it on that, and right now Porky, well, not looking too good right there. He's being chased out by Xantons right there, and we already saw Xantons forced to use his flash to escape earlier. Porky actually running a teleport here, so how do you think that fares as this game goes on? Teleport allows him to be a huge split pushing threat. If he gets ahead of Mundo, Mundo won't be able to do. Uh, so, sorry, uh, if he gets ahead of Rumble, Rumble will not be able to push him out because he'll be too tanky, he'll have too much regen, and he will just grind Rumble down. That obviously means that he can then push him off the tower and utilize his teleport. Oh no, both junglers go in for it at the exact same time, and Crow is going for it first here. Actually, does get spotted out by that warrior. He's actually being chased down here with these undertoes and that blue buff. But he does have Oriana there to back him up. Bruce there to help him out if he needs to. As Porky's Collapse. going for the, uh, the backup as well. But they're getting close in here. Two on three. They do get the slow on a Thayak. Porky, unfortunately, is actually going to dodge away from that. We see Yuri coming from the middle lane. And they're all fighting for this red buff here. But no one's able to capitalize on it just yet. We do have Lion. They do have a ward in that bush. They do get it. And they don't, don't get it. Crow smites it. Takes it away without pretty much any vision right there. And they thwart out Thayak's invasion. The ward in the brush was huge, but there's actually stunning bot. And bottom is getting caught right there. He's forced to actually arcane shift away. Gonna take quite a bit of damage right there, but does have a health pot to kind of help facilitate that right there. But we already see seven wards are being very aggressive here bottom, being very aggressive. Well, both teams are being very aggressive here on the top side as we saw that invade come out. And overall, lion or seven wards coming out ahead. Yeah, and now looking for the gank on the top lane. Vi is there. Mundo is squishy at this stage of the game. And here we go. The Q going to come in from oh. Crow. He's actually not going to get it. He even flashes for it, but it doesn't hit him. Doesn't get that little bit of an interrupt. And Porky will be able to escape, but he will not have that flash available anymore. And he's already being hurt in lane quite a bit um, by Xantins. But it's going to make it even harder now. And we're going to have Crow head down from that top side. Will he run into the bush? No! He walks away from the bush. He doesn't see He'll the pink never know. Oh, that is so unfortunate. And they know he's there. Fire going straight for him. He does have the red buff this time. If he keeps landing his undertoes, he could potentially pick up a kill as he's hitting another one here. Crow forced to run away. He gets hit with yet another. And both teams setting their middle lane to help defend against us. They do get the... Oh, the, the perfect satchel charge coming out of Yuri. He makes it so he can't even go that way. He doesn't have flash. He's going to go down. And that is double buff for Yuri here in the middle lane. 
Yeah, potentially also looking at bot lane right now because S is getting low. Oh, he's getting he's really not that low. <laughs> No, I but, but Ezra, Ezra was getting low though, so he was forced to back away. Still has that bear, still has that flash available. And unfortunately for them, not really gonna miss out on too much right there. We do have a nice CS lead already coming in for C right there over on the Lion's side. And Kimmy is gonna be pure all by himself at this turret. Yeah, Kimmy, he'll be okay. They won't be able to dive him right at this stage, but I'm actually curious as to whether Crows noticed the pink board because I haven't seen any pings coming down. He did walk through the brush but no one's going to clear it out. Well, it is just kind of screwing him over a little bit too, because he was spot right there, and that caused his his demise, and Yuri was able to pick up the double buff off of that, so it's really unfortunate, but let's see if Yuri can really make it work well for him. He does have a little bit of a CS lead here in middle, and we do see Xantem's returning back to lane here with that Ruby Crystal, with a ward or two, oh, just one ward. And right now, Porky hasn't gone back just yet, so he will have that slight level advantage. But Xantons is just going to try to control top with those double wards. Basically, he can't be pressured, but he does have that flash up here momentarily. Yeah, at the moment, this game is going a lot more Lion's way than last game. I mean, obviously, by this point, last game, there must have been about this level of goal difference between the two teams the opposite way around. So you've got to wonder, are Lion going to be able to snowball this out? They have a lot of tools to do so. They have very, very good siege if things get ahead. They have arguably a better mid-game AD carry, and they have Mundo split, split push. If he gets too far ahead, it's just going to be impossible to deal with. All right, now Crow is going towards his top side. He's not going to be spotted by here. Porky's already low and healthy. He has the flash get away. He's going to go down. Mundo doesn't go where he pleases, but I like how Crow actually gave that kill over to Xantons to help get it back as soon as he got ganked earlier on at level one. But the return dragon is smart here. Lion going to be able to get that. That will be a big edge for them because the total gold you're getting from a single kill on Mundo is probably not too far off of what you'd actually expect going the other way. Actually, Kimmy may get the stuff. See, he's able to chase him down, does so he should be able to trade decently well with Esther. There's a flay comes in, does force him back. The hook lands on Esther. We'll see you go in on this. He does get ignited. He's going to be forced to pop that barrier, and Kimmy's trying to chase him down. He doesn't have much mana, but he does have ignite. He does a flash and the auto attack. Able to pick up the kill, and oh. even there's the dice under the turret, picks the kill to Esther, but not before they turn it around. And we see Kimmy pick up two kills. Bloodthirsty supports all around, all the kills going to the supports, but Annie's going to outscale Thresh, which is a sentence I don't often say, but Annie is going to make more use of the gold, and the lane presence and the experience is going to go their way as well because of the bonuses on the kill. That's a nice edge for seven goals. Fantastic job by Kim right there, knowing his limits, flashing in for C right there, forcing him away, and even Essa did a great job of just kiting Nerzo under that turret, forcing him to commit a little too deep, and uh, fortunately for him, his death. And right now, we see those two kills, like I said before, for Kimmy. That's two assists going over to Essa. And just like that, just as we saw Seven Wars pretty far behind Lion, we able to catch up and close the skull difference. Yeah, they just put themselves pretty much back on an even footing. I'd like to note, by the way, the Pink Ward still stands, so it's clearly paid for itself a thousand times over by this point. But. I still have to favor Lion's composition just because I'm expecting. And if I, this turns out to be wrong for some reason, I'm going to look like it would be fool. But I am expecting Mundo will eventually get to a point where Rumble cannot deal with it. In spite of the kills. I think it depends, if I were to think about it personally. is that it, it, What about Xantens? If he gets, you know, maybe a Leandries right away, then some sort of advantage might, might be mute. I, I obviously don't know too well, and we're going to find out throughout the rest of this game, but it goes both ways. If Porky gets that, uh, that Central Cow, any harass that gets done onto him, going to regen it right back up. Not going to be too affected, but in the meantime, we do have Fag. He's visiting down towards his bottom side. They do have a Tribush in that pink, or in the... The, <laughs> the pink or in the Tribush. I'm all over the place today. So he knows he's not spotted just yet, but they need to land that Thresh Hook to make this happen. And right now, Kimmy, he's level 6. He has his, his Tibbers available. That's a, almost there as well, and this could be very, very, very dangerous. Yeah, he can push forward at the moment without it looking too suspicious because they've got the slight minion push advantage, and that means Thresh can angle for the hook. But you have to be careful, and they don't know where Vi is at the moment. Well, luckily for them, Vi is actually just still farming up towards that top side, and that could be there to stop this. They're actually trying to bait it out right there with that ward coming down, trying to kill off that pink ward, and they're going to not get it here. And, you see Seven Wars, they're playing very smart, very hesitant here. They know something is probably up right now, and they know that that huge mini wave is pushing against them, so they can just kind of wait, sit back, and get all that free farm. And Porky's still having... Uh, it's just based off health. He's, he's doing pretty well, I will say this. He's not, he's not winning the one-on-one -on -one duels currently, but he's ahead in CS, which is really critical. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a big, big deal. Getting the extra magic resist early on is going to mean that Rumble will have a lot of difficulty harassing him out. And Spirit Visage, once he's got that, the cooldown on his ultimate and the fact that his ultimate will heal for more. Once he's at level 11, I just don't see Rumble having the damage to push him out, even even if he gets a damage. I mean, obviously, if you get fed enough, it's going to happen eventually. There is a break point, but I just as long as they don't keep getting kills on Porky, I don't see it happening. All right, now Crow, the man able to help them create a kill on the top side for his Anton onto him. He's going to be looking for a gank on the bottom, but as you see on the minimap, Thiag is there as well. He's not going to be spotted. Both of them won't be spotted coming into this until they do get to that first push here, at least for Seven Wars side. And both junglers, they're looking for blood here, and we do see the hook. Unfortunately, it misses on a Kimmy right there, but you can see Hayek, he's there to make this happen. We still have Crow here over towards the spot side trying to make something happen. He's been level 7 now, hasn't had any ultimate ganks off just yet. But now, he's going to be pushing in here. He's going to be spotted by that ward if he does make his presence known. And actually, no, the ward does disappear, so he would not... Well, just I said that, put another one down, but he's looking for a gank here. He's coming in a lot of time, and I'm not sure if I agree with that. Flash Tibbers is nearly up. That would be a very, very strong initiate, and Flash for Vi is also up. But, yeah, I, I have to worry about that. They know Olaf isn't there. You actually saw Vi was backing away. They saw Olaf go past the ward in the river, instantly came back again. So they, they feel they can make this gank happen, but like you say, I'm just not sure they can, unless they were to go for a dive, but that's incredibly dangerous. Well, Crow was set on top of the ward right there. I believe he, I'm pretty sure even some wards knew that ward was down, considering we did see Nurzla use that to kill a pink ward earlier on, but in the meantime, we do see that gank in the top side. Porky gets very low. He gets taken down by Svanson, and he's trying to turn around the back. He's so low on health, but with that W, he's able to pick up the kill. And a one-for-one one trade, but Zantens coming out ahead. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication on Lion's side, but a fantastic job by Zantens to capitalize off of it. Yeah, and actually, overall, that's going to put Rumble's breakpoint that I keep talking about even further away. That means that Olaf is gaining, uh, sorry, uh, so Mundo is actually gaining less gold from Rumble than that in that exchange, even if the team itself benefits very slightly extra from the assist goal. Well, right now, we see some items being built up here. We see the Sork Boots picked up for Xantons. We see Nomad's Medallion done for Kimmy here. What else do you see that kind of something that we should keep our eye on? Nomad's Medallion and Mobility Boots that he just picked up implies he's now going to start looking for fights. That means Vi can gank much more effectively in conjunction with the Mobility Boots because you have to respect Flash Tibbers, so it either means there's going to be a, you know, a, a greater amount of zoning that Thresh is going to have to be incredibly careful of, or that they'll actually get a gank off. All right, now we see mid laners still going head-to-head -head here. In terms of CS across the board, this Crow kind of getting spotted right there. We do have a, still a lead in the top lane for Porky currently on Mundo. We have Fayak who has a... CS lead in the jungle currently, as well as a level lead. We have 109 to 112 CS here in the middle lane, and bottom lane still in CS favor, however, not as much as it was prior. Uh, S has been able to catch up quite a bit here, and even Kimmy has 15 CS behind that, obviously because you're Annie and you want to stack those stuns. Yes, so Seven was obviously not dominating in nearly the same way that they managed last game. I mean, by this point, it was already getting to the point of game over kind of thing. Now, Fayek is actually uh, potentially going to look for this. Oh, he's trying to chase down. We see the teleport coming in from Porky here, and right now that means Xantis isn't going to be able to stop this, but they do have Dragon up. They were able to get it last time because of the gank that Crow pulled off towards the top side. And it looks like they're going to be able to lock this one down as well here. So second Dragon of the game. I want to be very hesitant here in case they do still it does go over to Lion. However, Xantis was trying to push down that top turret, but doesn't have really any damage done onto it. But Mundo, Porky, he's still sticking around. He's actually not going back, and they're going to still win a blue buff. Yeah, they, they have no reason to be concerned because Ariana's out of mana in addition to everything else. Oh, we see the hook land on Esther. They're starting to run away here. We see Kimmy get so low on health. He's actually going to fuss with the wall. It looks like he might be able to escape here. He's actually dodging uh, Ezra. Oh, he gets the bears on top of Onesia. He's still not that healthy as he will drop eventually. But this might give the opportunity for Esther to pick up a kill as he does dodge the hook. He's still tanking up quite a bit of damage. A double kill comes in for Sia right there. And unfortunately for Seven Wars, they just weren't able to be there and stop that. Yeah, and that's one of the problems if you have a rumble pick. He doesn't push waves very fast. He doesn't kill towers very fast. Oh, Yuri might be able to get caught here. The ultimate is down for Crow, though. He's still very low in life. But with the minefield coming down, it does slow Crow down long enough that he's not going to be able to chase him down. In the meantime, though, Zantin's still trying to get that turret down. It's not going to go down in this wave, I would imagine. He's going to need at least one more. But by the time that happens, Porky will be back to lane. And we'll have the first turret of the game going over the line here in this bottom side of the map. 
Yeah, taking gold advantages, taking map pressure advantages. Now they're actually going to start to look towards this mid game. And at this point, I feel like it's worth discussing how these team fights are likely to go. I feel like Seven Wars has the better team fight composition. I feel actually, obviously, that is, however, assuming everyone gets there at the right time. That's a big, big problem for Rumble, as we've discussed. Now is actually the time to keep a really careful eye on whether Porky can deal with Xantins. He gets level 11, and he starts being able to push Rumble out of lane. Spell really big trouble for Seven Wars. Xantins is sitting on about 1,100 gold to spend. We see Bruce just sitting on 2,500 gold when he does want to go back here, but he's more than happy to just keep farming up here in middle, and you're seeing Porky trying to pressure him out here, just like you're saying before. He does pop the ultimate, and it will be able to force him away, but will he go for the dive here? He doesn't have, obviously, a defensive summoner, but if he gets another cleave, he might be able to chase him down, but he dodges it, and that will be Porky forced away, but Crow, he's coming in from the bottom side of the map. He has the ultimate available. They could be able to pull this one off, but right now, Xantins isn't that healthy, but he will have the damage to back up. The Ignite goes off. Porky won't escape, and that will be another kill going over to Xantins. Close run stuff there, but good Good call, essentially, by Seven uh, Wolves. Oh, uh, he has real team. No. Denied. Oh, well. That's that's just how <laughs> it goes sometimes. You, you know, it's always worth firing the, the banana up to top lane. It's actually, it is basically like... It's like it's like if you took Soraka's auto attack and then multiplied it by 10 and gave it AP scaling and AD scaling. A, okay, so... I just hope Laekis was watching that. He's actually the spectator over in NALCS and he's proud of me. But right now, Bruce is getting chased <laughs> down here, Thak. Forced to back away, but that turret's not healthy here, so they could potentially take that if they want to. But you're seeing Seven Wars respond to it. S is coming to the side, Kimmy's coming in as well, but everyone on the map is actually starting to conjugate towards middle as the hook. Well, actually, not going to last here, but Porky just doesn't care. He's going to continue to push this top lane, and we do see the Timbers come out right there. I don't think it actually stunned anyone here, but they still have the battle line draw. The Aura Ultimate comes out and hits their people. There's the Rumble Ultimate right behind it, and they do have the jump out of Yuri trying to escape the Ultimate out of Picks up the kill on the Esta, and Thayak has the ultimate running, trying to run away. Xantins gets caught with the hook, he gets played back into Yuri. That's going to be another kill going over, but this time to Nerzel. And Thayak forces the flash out of Crow. Porky popping the ultimate, gets the slow. I'm not sure Crow's going to be able to escape this one. He's going to go down, and Brewster, in the meantime, is being chased away, even forced to pop his brain. If a cleaver lands, that could be the end of him. He does land! Porky's going to continue to chase out the Ezreal ulti. Comes in from the side, and that was an ace, a perfect ace coming out of Lion Gaming. And it came off of the back of Seven Wars, landing a a gorgeous looking Ariana ultimately pulled in so many people but in chasing they chased too hard they delved too deep greedily they were in, in as a result caught all of them split terribly apart by both the box and the equalizer and it just meant they had nowhere to run and got chased down and it seems like Lion has finally it's finally been woken up maybe Simba's sad about his dad dying he's able to fight back here because they just look like not even a team in that first game and now they're coming together, 11 to 5 in kills, 29.6 thousand gold to 22.7. They're doing a fantastic job. The kills are split really evenly across the team as well. And over on the other side, I mean, we have two kills on Kimmy, three on Xantins, not the desired spread. But like you said before, that was a great engage coming out of them, but they just didn't have the damage behind it to back it up. Yeah, I, and I feel actually a lot of the way this game is running right now is partly because Crow doesn't seem to be nearly as confident on Vi as he was on Elise from what we saw last game. He hasn't really had that much influence. The only ganks he's been able to get are on Mundo when he's been pushed up really, really hard and actually committing to try and get Rumble himself. And right now we have Booster head up towards that top side. Bag is there already as well as Crow coming in from the side. And looking for a gank or maybe looking for a top tower push because we see Sia, he's he's pushing Brewster out. They know he's there. They're, they're pretty much zoning him at this point. And you can see Kimmy on the main map as well as us heading up towards this top side. And so they, they pretty much are forcing them to rotate here. And the thing is, if you're Seven Wars, you want to be able to farm up as much as possible right now. Yeah, they're actually going for this uh, dive on top. Oh, Xantens, he does get the stone of Porky, but he does, actually does have his ultimate available right now. He does pop it down. The six ultimate coming from the side. Is he going to pick up the kill? Yes, it does! Thayak gets one more E up, but here comes Crow! Use ult on the Thayak, but he had his Ragnarok popped, and he's actually not being harassed at all. He does get taken down by Brewster, though, but we do see Kimmy getting caught that the Orion ultimate coming out perfectly. Well, it's the ultimate out of Sia! Able to pick up the kill, The Kimmy now S is being caught here as the Thresh hook does land on the Brewster. He's in a drop, and they're not done just yet. They're still trying to chase him down. Sia taking up two men. He gets the double kill. Now Crow the last one, and he gets hooked up. That is a double kill for Porky, and another ace coming in for yes. Lion Gaming. Sia! Sayo was playing like a bruiser there. He jumped right into the middle and was just face tanking two members at once while he while he tried I call it a duel while he tried to take down Essa. 
but he's far enough ahead. He can do that. He's got the life support available for the colors, and he's got the damage from those repeated Q Triforce procs. He's really strong. And what is happening in the camp of Seven Warriors? They look so strong, so dominant in game number one, but now they're just falling apart into pieces. Two back-to-back -back fights, two back-to-back -back aces against them. They're falling further and further behind. I mean, it's 34.8 thousand, almost 10,000 gold difference here 20 minutes in. They have a good team fight composition, but the thing is, if they don't even get to the point where they can really pull it off, then what's the point of having a good team fight? Yeah, you you can never force a team fight if you're being split pushed to, to oblivion. And actually, Crow could be in trouble. Well, he's actually going to get caught here with the hook. We do see the blue buff go over to, I want to say, Munda. Porky picks that one up right there uh, without even a smite. And Crow what, did use his. Unfortunately, timed it a little bit wrong. And look at that. Blue buff up. Turn it right into a dragon off the back of that. Perfect transition. and. There's going to be that 10,000 gold leave. 10,000 again, but completely reversed situation from last time. This time... Oh, no, he's on side! Oh, oh the Ezreal oh, the gets combo. it! Ezreal gets the red buff with the ultimate and parry with six, and they steal away that red buff so well coordinated and so well played, and this is what we didn't see on a line last game. Yeah, they are looking so much better, and, and seven wars. They, they are actually looking genuinely worse. They're not playing the same way. They're not rotating as smartly, and they're getting caught out. But they're having to do this. They're kind of getting caught in these situations because they're having to contend with a man called Munda. And he's a doctor on top of that. You don't want to go up against that. And he just isn't afraid of Essa. And you can see Essa doesn't even want to get near him to be contesting this. But he's going to go into him knowing that Crow is there on the backside. But you're not going to kill a Mundo. Yeah, yeah, if you do use the Vi Ultimate, that will be down, and he won't really care. He's going to pop the ultimate momentarily. <laughs> he has a Sunfire Cape. The thing is, he pulled two people away, and from that, the rest of the team are engaged on the top side. Kimmy gets very low. Nerez goes with the play. He's actually to the team with the bug. Nerez just isn't going to be able to escape this one. But the Timbers does go down. There's some great damage, but it's just not enough CC to keep the rest of Lion away, and they're going to get a top turret off this, and Mundo, Porky, is still pushing this bottom lane. So you get yourself caught in a lose-lose situation. And I just have to say, how much of this is coming back to picking Rockfall and not picking Shivana, who was completely open and could completely reverse the situation that they're in? Well, hindsight is always 2020. I will definitely say that. And Essa, he's he's fancying his chances against Porky, but Porky has ultimate available, so that's a Sunfire KP. He's still split push. He's going for the dive throw to Essa, and Essa just can't do any damage. The Colony just massaging the Doctor's back, and he does get the kill, but he pulled three other people away from Seven Wars. In the meantime, you're seeing the rest of the team push onto this turret. They're going to get it. Porky will even be able to escape this. It looks like he actually might oh be able gosh. to do it. He has the reach up, and no, he gets shut down. In the meantime, on the top side of the map, Kimmy gets caught by a hook. Nerzlo goes down. Vance is so low as might be draws as well over to C right there. And with that little bit of a play, they pull four, four people away towards that bottom turret. They they get the kill onto uh, onto Essa right there as Porky does fall as well. But a one for one trade, when the rest of your team picks up two more and an inhibitor off of that, you're gonna take that trade any day of the week. That is that is the definition of work. That was dying to take the game pretty much because they've now got the map pressure in the top lane from the super minions. They already had the map pressure from the Mundo in the bottom lane, and he has Teleport. Baron now for Lion Gaming is so easy to force. They barely have to do anything, and Seven Wars have no choice but to just go in. I want to say this, though. I don't think, I, I personally don't think Baron might be a possibility, just for the fact that we've seen so many games, you know, where <laughs> they can be turned around just from a Baron, and the fact that they have an Annie AoE stun, Oriana and Rumble behind that, like that's a lot of damage and magic damage when you can take uh, extra from the Baron. But I think you're still right at the same time, where if Lion goes in for Baron, they force Seven Wars to commit to a fight, and if they position correctly, they're going to walk all over them again. Yeah, and I mean, they don't even have to do, the, I mean, they have to start the Baron, but all they have to do is take a little bit of vision control in this upper jungle, using the fact that, you know, they're way, way stronger in a straight up fight, and then they know if the Wombo combo, pro, the, you know, Seven Wars sacrificed so much in order to pick his coming, and then they just let Mundo continue to pressure bot, because he will, no one can duel him, he will chip down the tower. And he is pressuring that all by himself. He does have one man there to stop him, Essa, who doesn't have anything completed. He has a Bloodthirster and Berserker boots. That's about it. It's even point Oriana away. So we're going to see Baron go over for Lion here. But in the meantime, Porky is just distracting them long enough. And now some wars are going to realize, crap, they got Baron. I'm not sure we can fight them anymore when we couldn't win them anyways. But it's all up to Lion now. It's their game to lose at this point. And even then, I'm not sure they can. I, it, would take, it would take a Herculean throw at this point. Like, they would be lifting a mountain off their own shoulders, throwing it away, because they're, it's just so hard to lose, given the many advantages. 
Especially when you have a, oh, we see the hook land on a Brewster. He's gonna commit for this. He does get the play back in the team. This thing also comes in. Brewster's very low on healthy speed. Forced to run away. He does go down. I'm not sure what that squeal was, but we see Kimmy getting caught as well. And there's Lily. He's just letting the hooks left and right. And you see Parky the punch. He hits the cleaver. See, he's gonna chase him down. But the old ultimate comes down. They just arc and just out of it. And they don't care about taking this up. Pokey is just so damn strong. And Sia picks up a double kill. They're gonna pick up a Nexus turret. They're gonna get the second one here. And they're gonna take this to game number three. Live game is showing up. But this one finally, after just com getting completely dominated in the first game, they are looking.